As the largest automotive company in the world, Toyota sells a staggering 10 million cars per year. They achieve this level of sales by studying and outmaneuvering their industry peers over the past 85 years since the company was founded. Starting in the 1960s, Toyota was already known for making reliable vehicles, but further integrated well-engineered designs borrowed from German manufacturers and mimicked the tiered marketing models of US OEMs. They combined this with relentless optimization for high quality and low cost by creating the Toyota production system aimed at eliminating waste and simplifying designs to remove inconsistencies. Workers would supervise highly automated factories and would have the authority to stop the production line in the event of detecting defects or irregularities and then investigate root causes and establish a long-term solution such that it wouldn't happen again. Even though Toyota is a massive global auto manufacturer today, it's still a family business run by CEO Akio Toyota, who is the grandson of the company's founder, Kichiro Toyota. This has helped allow the management team over the years to make long-term decisions, building strong and lasting businesses since they're in it for the long game. It's said that Toyota has a 100-year plan outlining the vision of where they want the company to be. This may have allowed Toyota to look further into the future in order to determine their strategic direction. The Prius was the world's first hybrid car to be mass-produced, and since its debut in 1997, Toyota has surpassed 15 million hybrid electric vehicle sales worldwide. Interestingly enough, Toyota has also dabbled in the fully electric vehicle space since as early as 1997 with the RAV4 EV, sporting a nickel metal hydride battery with 95 miles of range. However, the company only sold 1,500 units and discontinued the vehicle in 2003. Seven years later, they tried once again with another RAV4 EV, this time partnering with a small startup called Tesla, who specialized in providing the lithium-ion battery and induction motor-based powertrain. Tesla's 41 kilowatt-hour battery pack gave the vehicle 103 miles of range, but sales only ran for two years from 2012 to 2014, with Toyota selling 2,500 units at which point the relationship between the two companies began to sour due to culture clashes, and this was further aggravated by recalls on the vehicle. These two failures may be the reason that Toyota has been virtually left out of the electric vehicle game until now. In April 2021, Toyota unveiled the BZ4X concept car as a battery electric SUV, this time designed by Toyota itself in partnership with Subaru, for which Toyota holds a 20% stake in the company. This is Toyota's first real foray into battery electric cars since its partnership with Tesla fell apart. The world is shifting to EVs with already 20% of new car sales in China being electric, 10% in Europe and 3% in the United States, although the Biden administration is targeting 50% by 2030. Toyota simply has to be a player in this space. So far, they've been focused on hybrid, plug-in hybrid, gas, and even hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, but have been lacking on the EV front. If internal combustion engine vehicles are going to be halved, if not more, within the next eight years or so, then most of Toyota's business is poised to disappear. In order to keep up with 10 million unit sales per year, they need to rapidly transition their entire global armada of factories to electric just to keep up. This is a colossal task, given that Toyota has 67 factories worldwide. They're also only targeting 3.5 million EVs by 2030, starting from virtually zero today. Even if they hit their goal, that's only 35% of their current sales. Their old partner, Tesla, is primed to eat their market share and gunning for an insane 20 million EVs by the same year, a number never to have been achieved by any single automaker. There's no telling what may happen to the part of Toyota that isn't able to make the transition fast enough. Now in the current environment, inflation has essentially ravaged the automotive industry and has hurt those automakers who haven't been able to raise prices and cover increasing costs fast enough. 
However, there are some assets that can help protect investors from inflation while still promising growth potential. Back in March, Tesla CEO Elon Musk recommended physical assets during inflationary periods. While equities can depreciate in value during economic downturns, these physical assets are less likely to do so. Institutional investors agree. According to McKinsey and Company, financial institutions typically invest between 30 and 50% of their assets into alternatives like physical assets. And they predict that the allocation from retail investors will double over the next three years. One executive from SLC Management, a firm that manages alternative investments, even said, if you're not actively getting into alternatives in the next 18 to 24 months, it will be too late. Now, in the past, real estate and private equity have been popular alternatives for high net worth investors. But there's a physical asset that's historically shown resilience during inflationary periods like these. And according to the MW All Art Index, it's fine art. While the 60-40 portfolio of stocks and bonds, the bedrock of millions of investors' savings, is down 34% this year, a Morgan Stanley study found the average artwork is selling at auction for 26% more than this time last year. In fact, the last time inflation was near its current levels, art appreciated at an annual rate of 17.5%. Now, chances are you don't have an Elon-sized bank account to buy and hang a Picasso in your living room, but luckily there's Masterworks. With Masterworks, you can add million-dollar artwork to your portfolio for a fraction of the cost. Masterworks enables investors to invest in fractional shares of high-value contemporary art from legendary names like Picasso and Banksy. While global markets are floundering across the board, seven of Masterworks' eight exits have delivered over 17% net returns to their investors, and they're just getting started. Over 550,000 people have signed up so far, but TMIO Tesla subscribers can get priority access. Just click the link in the description. Toyota's lagging entry into the EV space is likely a primary reason why Toyota has been lobbying the government and pushing against electric vehicles to try and slow down their adoption, giving them enough time to catch up. Even Elon Musk was shocked that Toyota, the maker of the forward-thinking Prius, was trying to sway the government away from EVs. It's important to realize that although Toyota is the current global leader, it took them decades to gain this market share. If a large chunk of it is lost to the rest of the industry, particularly Tesla and Chinese automakers that are moving very rapidly to gain share, it will be an uphill battle for Toyota to try and regain potentially millions of lost customers. Losing large sums of market share could have a devastating effect on their shareholders as well, if Toyota needs years to try and claw back business due to a shortage of EV sales. You don't want to give your competitors a head start in order to try and catch up later. This seems like the same mistake that General Motors made when it effectively gave the small car market to Toyota. Now Toyota is following the same playbook, but with EVs. But arguably, Toyota makes some of the best gas cars and hybrid vehicles around, with multi-year backlogs on the latter. But the internal combustion engine is quickly being phased out, and hybrid cars still contain engines that run on fossil fuels. Even for General Motors, a major global automaker, also off to a late start on electric vehicles, their CEO Mary Barra stated in an interview that why should they go halfway to the solution with hybrid vehicles? Why go halfway to the solution with a hybrid, but go all the way and get to the end game? And that's one of the reasons we're going to be able to have a full portfolio out faster than most of our competitors because of that investment, because we didn't didn't do hybrids. Customers kind of said, I'm not interested in a hybrid because I, you know, I don't want to pay for two propulsion systems on the vehicle. Thankfully, Toyota's BZ4X, announced in 2021, has already hit the road in mid-2022, just one year after it was unveiled. The BZ4X is part of a larger, beyond zero, series of electric vehicles for which Toyota is planning to bring seven such vehicles to market by 2025. Now, this is a classic error done by many large companies who try to flood the market with competing vehicles to push competitors out. In this case, however, bringing an electric vehicle to market is very challenging as Toyota has already seen twice in their history. Now in the next three years, they want to bring seven EVs to market, 
even before they validated the first one. The BZ4X is a compact SUV offering 222 or 252 miles of range with dual and single motors respectively. This is a bit of a disappointment, especially given that at the LA Auto Show, Toyota promised 300 miles of range according to TechCrunch, but these numbers were highly reduced upon entering actual production. Toyota is treading on eggshells here because they have a new set of competitors such as Tesla, with CEO Elon Musk always shooting to make sure that the production vehicle is better than the prototype, and Tesla delivered on this promise with the Model Y that boasts 318 miles with a long-range version. Tesla's Model Y can also accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds with the performance version and 4.8 seconds with the long range. Toyota's BC4X takes 7.1 seconds to do 0 to 60. This very much seems like Toyota is bringing to market a very bare bones point A to B car with nothing really special to delight customers. Even TechCrunch calls it a solidly middling EV. The Verge notes that the BZ4X is mediocre at best, with low range, a slow charging rate, a less than inspiring design, and a price tag that is not all that affordable and isn't really worth it. It's priced in the low $40,000 range, and while this seems cheaper compared to Tesla's Model Y versions that are available for above $65,000, this may only be temporary as Tesla is well positioned going into 2023. For one thing, Tesla always tries to satisfy the higher end models first, but in this particular case, supply has been constrained and demand has been off the charts. Tesla appears to be catching up now with waiting time for vehicles dropping rapidly despite demand staying very high. Elon Musk has plans to introduce a standard range Model Y which he's previously taken off the table, citing that he wasn't happy with the vehicle's sub-250 mile range. However, Tesla has been ramping up new batteries, the 4680 cell, which could lower the cost and increase the range of this more affordable Model Y, which would be priced to go head-on against a vehicle such as the BZ4X. Tesla has been refining their electric vehicle technology for years and has a massive network of high-speed chargers, something that is critical for EVs and that Toyota lacks. Furthermore, the BZ4X is also manufactured in both Japan and in China. This may be a major problem for Toyota, given that the Biden administration requires North American assembly in order to obtain up to $7,500 in tax credits. That means Tesla's vehicles could get $7,500 cheaper starting in 2023, and Toyota's do not. It could take time for Toyota to shift electric vehicle production into North America, especially in high enough volumes if they want to capitalize on these tax benefits as well. Now, Toyota's BZ4X platform architecture is based on the electric Toyota New Global Architecture, or ETNGA. This platform is centered around flexibility of design, allowing Toyota to change the vehicle width, length, wheelbase, and height with variable and non-variable components. Toyota says this allows development times for different model variants to be reduced and individual models to be developed in parallel. This is definitely important for Toyota if they want to be able to introduce seven different types of electric vehicle models to market, though there are always trade-offs. Compared to Tesla, Tesla has a small number of vehicle models with Elon Musk saying that the company is aiming for just one model in every major segment. This has kept Tesla's variability quite low. Typically, one common trade-off for flexibility is performance. That's because being able to swap in and out different modules means that they're not tightly coupled and would lose efficiency. For example, Tesla's skateboard architecture for the vehicle allows for more flexibility. Essentially, any body can be put onto the car. EV startup Rivian uses a similar architecture and they can turn their skateboard configuration into an SUV, a pickup truck, or a delivery van. But the electric vehicle industry has shifted as Tesla is moving to a structural battery pack architecture where the batteries are no longer carried around by a skateboard but rather make up the structure of the vehicle. This leads to a more efficient, lower-cost vehicle at the expense of flexibility, 
but Tesla doesn't need or want as many models as what Toyota is planning. And so having more models based off the same platform better make more business sense for Toyota because from a structural perspective, Tesla's vehicles should have many advantages, including the aforementioned cost and performance, but also in safety. Given that in the past, Tesla has been the one to provide Toyota with their powertrain and various components, this makes the ETNGA a platform that's still in its early infancy, not yet as refined relative to Tesla. And some of these shortcomings may be seen in the BZ4X, which hit consumer hands in the middle of this year. So far, the launch of Toyota's first modern-day electric vehicle has been nothing short of a disaster. Back in May, it was noted that for DC charging, the Toyota BZ4X may slow down in temperatures below freezing and may not work at all below 15 degrees Celsius or 4 degrees Fahrenheit. This suggests that some customers would be stuck using slow chargers or not be able to charge at all if it gets too cold outside. But even in warmer conditions, fast charging the vehicle from 0 to 80% state of charge took over an hour according to an article from Inside EVs, something a Tesla supercharger can do in about 20 to 30 minutes on a Tesla. Then in late June, Bloomberg reported that Toyota reluctantly released an electric vehicle in May and weeks later recalled 2,700 of them due to the risk of their wheels falling off. While this seems crazy, it certainly wasn't good for Toyota's public image of the BZ4X, making it seem that the vehicle was rushed out the door. Typically, some of these recalls are just precautions and the automaker can quickly resolve any issues, but the situation went from bad to worse. Toyota advised that the 2023 BZ4X was being recalled for safety issues and that consumers should not drive until a remedy was available. They even went as far as offering to buy back the vehicle from consumers. And this also affected the Subaru Solterra in the same way, given that Subaru and Toyota essentially share the same car and sell it under different names. Now, Toyota is a respected company in the industry, and they're always doing their best to improve over time. The BZ4X issues have also been on a very small scale, even though they've been amplified by the media, but Toyota can still relaunch a successful vehicle and fix up any issues related to the recalls. There is certainly a market for a seemingly bare-bones vehicle like the BZ4X at the right price. That said, the future of the company may certainly hinge on their electric vehicle strategy. But Toyota is making misstep after misstep and being very sloppy in a rapidly changing world where the competitors are fierce and unforgiving. So do you think that Toyota will be able to recover from the messy launch of the BZ4X? And longer term, can Toyota eventually catch up in the electric vehicle space to remain a dominant player in the industry? Or will companies like Tesla, who are focused solely on EVs, be able to take market share away from the automotive giant such that it will never go back to the way it was? Don't forget to check out our Masterwork sponsor link in the description below. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.